Hello and welcome back to the show. As you may have heard, the Oscar nominations were released yesterday, and the first thing I noticed looking through the list was how many titles that I loved last year that were left off the list for whatever reason. So this video is just going to be taking you through what, I, what movies that came out last year that I thought got snubbed at the Oscars for 2018. <laughs> First film I'd like to talk about is Geostorm. This movie proves that the disaster genre can still be as fresh and new as it was all those years ago. Seeing Gerard Butler run away from natural disasters is one of the most engaging times you could have as a cinema goer throughout this decade and maybe even throughout all time. I hope this helps him to break out of his B-roll acting career. And because he's a newcomer, I'm very excited to see where his career goes next. The special effects are phenomenal. I, I saw it in IMAX 3D, which is really the only way to experience such an immersive experience like this. And I, I cried twice because I thought death was legitimately imminent. Dean Devlin's directing and writing is easily at the top of its game, and we're seeing an unchained Dean, one operating on instinct like a feral animal loose in the Hollywood Hills. It's this ferocity, the willingness to try new things, and shaking up Hollywood by making a disaster movie with Gerard Butler that makes the Academy nervous. It threatens them, as it should, so they don't give it any nominations. Honestly, it, it's disgraceful and it, it makes me want to puke. It makes me want to puke all over. The movie that got Colin Trevorrow fired from Star Wars Episode Nine, The Book of Henry. He was just too awesome for Disney, I guess. Hot off the heels of it, Jaden Libbyshire gives a fantastic portrayal of Henry in this Christian family film. I can feel the spirit of the Lord coursing through me all throughout the viewing, telling me to smite the sinners and the gays and to nominate him for the Oscars. And nominated I did, but the satanic hacks over at the Academy aren't pushing God. They're not pushing Jesus. They're avoiding nominating the God-fearing films because they're agents of the New World Order, and it's all part of their agenda. They nominate bestiality-fueled pagan fairy tales over and over, ingraining these ideas in the public conscience, so when they decide to take over, we won't even notice. I mean, arson, bestiality, murder, homosexuality, and teenage rebellion are all featured prominently in the Best Picture nominees alone. These crimes against humanity are not only being supported, but perpetrated by the Academy and their cronies. The revolution is coming, and the Book of Henry will be there when it does. Daddy's Home 2. After the months and months of continued Hollywood allegations about them all being sex predators, there's nothing we need more than a refreshing Mel Gibson family film. He has proved he's in good standing with the Academy after last year's Hacksaw Ridge, and so it came as a complete shock when this was not nominated for anything. Instead, some silly furry smut took its place. Mark Wahlberg gives the performance of a lifetime, becoming an entirely new person, which is what we refer to in the biz as acting. John Lithgow proves in this film that he is not above it, and Will Ferrell truly proves his dramatic chops. It works on multiple levels, both as a silly comedy and a dramatic thriller about our troubled times. Daddy's Home 2 truly encapsulates the uneasiness felt in the nation in 2017 and deserves to be recognized at least by the Academy. The first one started off, but the second one proves that Daddy truly is home. I absolutely could not believe when the sequel to The Shining got so little press as it did in such a spin-off focused market. The movie I'm talking about, of course, is The Dark Tower. Well, they have seemed to have switched the actor for Danny and changed his name to Jake, a decision that really cements this movie as an important and provocative commentary on the cinematic universe craze seems to confuse some audience members, but those who are well-versed in cinematic language and filmic techniques will have no problem following the continued adventures of the Torrance family. Recasting Jack Nicholson's character to Idris Elba was a bold move, but it most certainly paid off in dividends. It just taps into a whole market of black people that Jack wasn't reaching before. The fact that he wasn't nominated is honestly borderline racial profiling. Am I, am I right, guys? Comment down below. Fifty Shades Darker was honestly a very pleasant cinematic experience. I came a total of five times during this movie. As the title promises, I could not see the screen because the movie was very dark. I took out my flashlight on my phone to see better before I was so rudely escorted out by Derek at the AMC near Walmart. 
Derek. His name's Derek. Hit him up. Try and find him. Th th throw things at him. Beat his car. Kill his dog. Do something to him. One bad Yelp review later, and they will not be getting my business again anytime soon. Absolute garbage. But from what I heard, the movie was amazing. Christian is just as sexy as he was in the first movie, and the new subplot about actual conflict and things happening to the characters was just ingenious. The performances here were absolutely on point. I almost called the cops because I, they were actually fornicating on screen, and that's illegal. This film is absolutely riveting. I felt myself slowly solidifying to my seat as this wondrously complex, absolutely beautiful film unfolded before me. Tom Hiddleston delivers a pitch-perfect performance as lead detective, and, dare I say it, every single kill in the movie was... chilling? It legitimized the genre film, taking it from silly B-movies to truly meaningful films. The hits just keep on coming throughout the film, culminating in one of the best climaxes on screen since Fifty Shades Darker. Its October release put it in good contention for the Academy Awards, but by some clerical error, it did not score a single nomination. <laughs> Wish Upon is without a doubt the best horror experience to ever grace the silver screen. To not give Joey King the Oscar for her performance as Claire would be to spit in the face of art itself. And Ki Hong Lee is excellent and seems to utterly transform the role of Ryan, the sneaky Chinaman who knows all the secrets of the magic demon box. Every kill in this movie is gorier than the last, leaving me in utter awe of the lengths director John went with these actors. I would never have thought of actually killing them. What madmen! It's innovators like those found in the production of Wish Upon that push the medium forward, and that needs to be recognized by the Academy in the future. The fact that it wasn't is honestly tragic.